Hello and welcome back. I'm Jane and this channel is all about home recording made easy for musicians, vloggers, bloggers and podcasters. Over the years I have reviewed lots of USB microphones and this time it's the turn of the Rode NT-USB Mini which quite a few of you have asked about. Just a quick heads up that Rode have lent me this microphone for this video review but I haven't received any compensation for doing the video and I've got to send it back just so you know. So here is the mic. It's like all things Rode. It's really nicely designed. It feels solid and robust, quite weighty and minimal. It's a cardioid condenser with headphone volume dial on the front, headphone port and USB-C port on the back, and it comes with this insanely satisfying magnetic desktop stand. As you can see, it's pretty compact. The clue is in the name. At the moment, I'm filming this directly with my iPad using the NT-USB Mini sat in front of me on the desk on the stand it came with. It currently sells in the UK for around £89 so it's pretty well priced for a studio quality USB mic and this is how it sounds in class compliant mode out of the box just plugged into my iPad. No post-processing of any kind. In fact all the audio you will hear in this video was recorded one way or another with this little mic without any post-production. But you are not hearing it at its best like this. Let me fix it onto my studio arm and you will see what I mean. For singing, live streaming or voiceover production, Rode do recommend setting up the microphone around 10 to 15 centimetres from your mouth to take advantage of the proximity effect. And also if you place the microphone closer to the sound source, it will also improve the voice to background noise ratio. And if you have a less than perfect recording space, it will behave very nicely. So you will definitely get the most out of this mic if you attach it to a studio arm or some kind of mic stand. I've attached it to my Rode PSA1 studio arm which is a really nice one however it does cost nearly as much as the mic so if you're on a tighter budget you can get an entry-level desktop studio arm for around £20 and it will make a massive difference to the quality of your recordings because you'll have so much more control over where you can place the mic. The Rode NT-USB Mini actually has a built-in pop filter and copes very well with puh sounds. Now my first impression is this is a nice high quality easy to use USB mic and if you want to compare it with all the others I will be uploading this video plus a more detailed review and a high-res audio recording so you can compare it directly to all the others I have tested and there are many because the USB market is huge so why would you choose this one over any of the others is it any better or worse well let's head over to my Mac and I will show you what Rode have done behind the scenes to make this mic a little bit different and extremely usable and versatile for a variety of scenarios. If you're going to use the Rode NT-USB Mini on either your Mac or Windows computer then you should definitely download the Rode Connect app. It is completely free and it transforms the functionality of the microphone. There is quite a lot to it but the Learning Hub is a really useful resource and pretty easy to follow. Now, when you open up Rode Connect for the first time, you will go through the initial setup, but you can always go back to the setup assistant if you want to swap things around. It's going to give you the option to load your NT-USB Mini into one of the four channels. As I only have one mic, I've loaded mine into channel one. But the really cool thing is you could have up to four of these mics, which would be perfect if there were several of you doing a chat show or similar. And by the way, you can buy an optional color coding kit if you have a set of mics so that you can match them up to the channels. After setting up your mics, you can then add system audio and a virtual device into these additional virtual channels. Now you can see I have three channels available. I've got my microphone, the system audio and the virtual channel as well. I would have more if I had more microphones. Now let's have a look at the sound settings in my system preferences. You'll see that these virtual channels have become available as input and output devices. This allows you to route not just your microphone, but also system audio and an additional virtual channel. So I'm going to look at how all this fits together and why this is so cool. But while I'm here, I'm going to choose the Rode Connect system as my default output device and you will see why shortly. Now let's start with the mic setup. It's very easy to set up the gain of your microphone. You just need to click this button here and then you can adjust the levels of the microphone 
until your audio is consistently somewhere in this green region here. You'll see that you have an optional noise gate and compressor. You can choose whether to use these or not. I'm going to leave the compressor on. You also have these two Aphex effects. You've got the Aural Exciter and the Big Bottom processors, which add a bit of shine to your vocals. You can turn these on or off to your liking. So I'm going to leave the setup like this. Now, this fader does not affect the gain of the microphone. What it does is it allows me to adjust the volume of the microphone within the mix. And you'll see there are similar faders on all the channels and you also have mute and solo buttons too. Now, you remember how I set up the Rode Connect system as my output device? If I, for example, open up Spotify and start playing a track, you will see that the system audio comes in on this system channel. So I can turn that up in the mix. Or I could mute it. So I can mix my microphone and the system audio together here. And I can choose to adjust the levels of either or both. This would be really cool if you wanted to record over a backing track or use music tracks in a podcast or live stream. It would also be really easy for you to just record tracks off YouTube, Spotify and similar simply by turning up the system audio and turning down the microphone. So I have a copyright free track running on Spotify on loop so that I can show you how all this fits together. Now, at the same time, what I could do is open up Skype or Zoom or similar conference software and go into the audio and video settings and set the Rode Connect virtual as the input and output device. Now, once I've done that, the caller will hear my microphone and any audio from the caller will be heard on this virtual channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the test audio going. I'm going to bring up this channel. Now I'm going to mute that. So now I've got that test audio running and I've got the system audio running in this section here, we have a bank of sound effects. In this first section are a bank of effects that actually get provided by Rode with the software. They're pretty cheesy. But they're fairly standard effects you might want to use in a podcast, but you're not confined to those because you have got eight banks of eight, so you can add up to 64 tracks. They don't have to be sound effects. They could be music beds or similar. I'm just going to open up my Finder window and drag in some of my own files just to show you how you can do that. So I could put an alarm clock thing in, dog bark heartbeat and so on. Once you've added your files, you can right click and you can change the colors to, of the pads to anything that you like. You can also adjust how the pad behaves, whether it's a hold to play the sound or a one shot or a toggle on and off and you can choose looping options as well. The other thing you can do rather than just playing a sound effect is you could use this swear function so if you have a caller who is ringing in, then starts using bad language, if you press this button, what it does is it mutes everything and just plays that standard swear beep. So if you start talking, so you can see how that Now this is all set up. I've got the basis of a whole podcast show here. I could use my mic here music and other system audio here, any caller into the show here and my sound effects here. And of course I can adjust all the various levels as I choose. It's also ideal for live streaming too. So for example, if you were a gamer and you wanted to combine your voice and the sound of your game in action and the voice of a friend on Skype, then that is really easy to do. In fact, I'll show you in OBS how this all works, but obviously you could use any streaming platform. So within OBS, you simply add an audio input capture device. And in this case, it's going to be the Rode Connect. And what you do for the device is you select Rode Connect Stream. 
And once you've done that, then the audio will be everything that you are streaming through that Road Connect app. So if I bring my caller back in on the Skype. Or I bring my system audio in. Or any combination of those then those will all be streaming out through OBS or whatever streaming platform I'm using. In fact, I am making use of this Connect stream to record the audio for this video. All I needed to do was make sure I chose Rode Connect stream as my mic input with my screen recording software, and then this app has taken care of the rest so you can hear all the different components. So it's very easy to set up these different channels, and you can see how you can mix everything together. But let's have a look at some of the preferences that you can set up as there's one or two things worth mentioning there. Mostly you'll probably be listening to everything you're doing through the headphone output of the microphone, but you can also choose to mirror the monitoring out to a different device if you've got speakers plugged in that you want to listen through. So all you would need to do there is pick your audio interface or other output. So for example, your internal speakers on your computer. If you do do that, then make sure that microphones are excluded to avoid your microphone feeding back through the speakers. But of course you can choose the option to include them if you want to, if they're say in a different room. Now you can record everything that you're doing within the app simply by pressing this record button here. And what's really cool is you can choose whether you make a stereo recording, which would just be a stereo mix of everything you're doing, or a multi-channel recording. Now, if you do a multi-channel recording, then everything that you record will be recorded in a stereo mix, plus you will get a separate track for each of the different channels. And I'll show you that in a minute. Also within the settings, you can adjust the latency. There's two options here. You can try low and you can try ultra low. It's going to depend on your system and the speed that it's working at, which one works best for you. You can also, if you want, scale the app up like that so it's bigger. But I'm going to leave it there so it fits in my screen recording software. Now earlier I made two test recordings, one stereo and one multi-channel so that I can show you the difference. When you've made your recordings you can access them here, you can rename them, you can colour code them, you can export in a variety of platform specific formats ready to directly upload to Libsyn and similar. But what I'm going to do here is just export to WAV file. When you export your audio from the Road Connect app, it creates a folder that's named the same as your file. And within that folder, you will see your audio file. So all I need to do is drag that into Logic and you can see my stereo mix as a track there. Now, if I look at the multi-channel test that I did, you can see I've got a bunch of files here. I've got my stereo mix which I will drag in now. So that is the mix of the whole show, but also I have got an individual WAV file for each of the individual components. And I'm just dragging them in here so that you can see them. So I've basically got the microphone, the sound effects, I've got the system audio, and I've got the virtual audio from Skype as well. This is perfect if I want to take individual components and do any further post-processing. So overall, I've really enjoyed using the Rode NT-USB Mini for this review. It's affordable. It's got a great quality, both audio and product build. It's multi-platform, so you can use it on your tablet as well as on your Mac or PC. It's easy to use multiple NT-USB Mini microphones if you've got the Rode Connect app. The Rode Connect app makes it super easy to live stream, record and podcast. I love the multi-channel recording option. It gives you so much flexibility. There are a couple of moans I've got. I would like to see a mute button on the microphone. A lot of other USB mics I've tried have one of those and I think it's quite handy, not having to go into the app to mute the mic. And also the headphone preamp is a bit noisy. I think it's been designed so that it will drive quite high impedance headphones, 
but what you hear in the headphones isn't necessarily what you're recording. There's a slight difference, which is a bit off-putting. But overall, I think this is a very good USB mic option and it's got a few unique superpowers based around that Rode Connect app. So I'd definitely recommend it. Now, I haven't delved really deeply into the tech specs. You can read up on all those. I'll link you below. I wanted to focus more on the app and how it worked in conjunction with the mic. I hope you found this helpful. As usual, any comments or questions, post them below. This video was by popular request. And even if I don't get time to reply to absolutely everything, I do love to read your suggestions and questions as they do help me decide what content to create next to help you out. If you have enjoyed this, then please do like the video. That really helps the channel and do subscribe if you want to be the first to see my new video tutorials and reviews as they come out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.